Servus everyone and welcome to another video. Today, I will add the USB extension to the Asus P55 T2 P4. When I bought this board as a part of a used system in 1998, I was not paying much attention to the model of the motherboard. I was more interested to know what kind of CPU is installed, how much memory does the system have, or how large is the hard disk. But rarely someone was interested in the exact model of the motherboard. At least, it was not important to me. So here we were, in a time when serial ports, parallel ports and gaming ports ruled the view of the back of most computer systems. Most people haven't even heard about USB at the time. This was mainly because USB was a new standard and devices weren't available yet. In fact, the original USB specification was introduced in January 1996. It was still in its infancy and did not experience a high adoption rate. A lack of operating systems with USB support and the missing compatible devices delayed the adoption until the release of USB 2.0 in the early 2000s. A revised specification for USB 1.1 was released in 1998. Since the Asus P55 T2 P4 was released in 1996, we can assume that USB is implemented based on the original USB 1.0 specification. I did some research and had to buy a USB expansion module from eBay. In online forums, people suggested to make sure that the pinout is correct before installing the extension. I'm no expert in electrical engineering, but I do know how to use a multimeter in continuity mode. Basically, I will try to trace which pins are connected to what. This is the connector we will focus on. The pin pairs from left to right are 5 volts, 2 data lines and ground. I will trace the 5 volts and ground directly to the power connector. The different colors of the power connector cable have a meaning. The red cable is the 5 volt supply and black is ground. Good news! At least the power rails are where they are supposed to be. With the pin checks out of the way, we can install the extension board into the case.
Windows 98 Second Edition had the drivers available for the USB control over the motherboard. But if you'd think that you can just plug in your USB flash drive and copy files, you would be mistaken. First, you need to install a driver for your flash drive. I totally forgot about this, but then I did remember purchasing flash drives that came with a small CD or even a floppy disk that included the drivers. Luckily, the internet has plenty of resources to solve this little inconvenience of missing drivers. Just go online, search for the next best driver you can find, and voila! Hmm, this was not expected. So don't install the first best USB mass storage driver you find. Better to read and then use the correct driver. Important is if you're using the original version of Windows 98 or Windows 98 Second Edition. You can find this information in the system properties. A link to these drivers is in the video description. I have the second edition of Windows 98. After downloading the correct drivers and installing them, everything works correctly. And finally we have access to our USB flash drive. Removing a USB device safely is a bit more complex compared to modern operating systems. But the concept is the same. You just have to click through a few more windows. And finally, here are a few benchmarks to test the transfer speed of the USB controller. The original USB specification allows for a maximum theoretical transfer speed of 1.5 MB per second. The maximum speed reached in this benchmark was 960 KB per second, which is acceptable. I will also perform a read and write test of a 100 MB file and show the time that is taken on the screen. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.